Good afternoon, Mr. Madhusudan. Himanshu, sir. Good afternoon, Himanshu. We have been talking right. to each other. We have been hearing yes. each other's voice, but not seeing each other in 2D. Now we are in yes, 2D. Not even correct. in 3D. Yeah. So are we live? Yes. So, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this uh, very special session, which has been uh, which is specifically on uh, drone manufacturing, R&D, testing, and testing facilitation in Tamil Nadu. And this session is specially designed in partnership with TIDCO, uh, which is a government of Tamil Nadu body. And uh, with us, uh, we have Wing Commander Madhu Sundan, who, would be, uh, who has joined us from TIDCO, and he'll be making a presentation on uh, various aspects of uh, on, on this particular topic and he'll be covering what are the various opportunities which exist for the drone companies and what uh, what facility that uh, TITCO is uh, is in a position to provide to them. He'll ta also talk about the center of excellence. He'll talk about the common engineering uh, manufacturing facilities and various other aspects which would be of interest to the various drone companies who have logged in and joined us today for this particular webinar. Well, um, uh, we were uh, to be joined by Special Secretary Mr. Krishna, Krishna Murthy, but unfortunately has been called by the Minister. And uh, so we have having Commander Madhu Sundanjiya with us, who will be making this presentation. So I'll uh, before I request him to make a detailed presentation about this particular project, uh, all the attendees who have joined us on the Fiki Bike platform, who will be viewing us uh, our live streaming, uh, for their uh, queries and questions, I'll request them to put it in the chat and uh, we'll take up, post the presentation. The questions will be taken up. Just uh, keep your keep writing your uh, queries in the chat box. So with that uh, note, I request uh, Wing Commander to kindly take over. Over to you, sir. Thanks a lot, Sumit. Uh, and uh, I would request for a small change. And in case people want to put a raise their queries, I'm ready to answer them in between itself. That I'll leave that with you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let, without taking much of your time, let me jump into the actual presentation. Let me share my slide. Uh, one second, just give me a moment. Ah, I think I need to be uh, permitted to share my screen. The host has to permit me to share my screen. Uh, Edwin, please give the sharing rights. Yes, sir. All participants have rights. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, is my screen visible? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Okay. Okay, if it's One second. Sorry, sorry for this. Let me just. Yeah, here we go. Uh, there are normally there are certain technical glitches which happen. And if you can see the slide, let me start off. Okay, I represent uh, the Tamil Nadu Defense Industrial Corridor. Uh, Mr. Smith had mentioned that I am part of TITCO. Yes, Tamil Nadu Defense Industrial Corridor is one of the projects handled by uh, Tamil Nadu Industrial Development Corporation. And this uh, next few minutes is primarily to showcase how we as a state government body is in the process of encouraging the drone manufacturing, R&D pertaining to this and testing in the state of Tamil Nadu. So to give a background about what the Tamil Nadu Defense Industrial Corridor is, this is a, uh, a this corridor was launched about uh, three years back on 20th January 19, 2019, with the aim of creating enabling infrastructure for the aerospace and defense industries. So what we have done in the status, we have defined aerospace and defense as aviation, space, and defense. Whatever is related to this is called as aerospace and defense here in the state of Tamil Nadu, and which means aviation includes commercial, military, it doesn't matter what is the size of it, it includes manned, unmanned, everything is included in aviation. 
when we say defense, any technology which is used in defense, which includes drones is as well. So, despite the fact drones have commercial as well as military applications, this sector would definitely fall within the scope of aerospace and defense. And this corridor is stretching between five nodes. So, this is not a geographical corridor which has, let's say, about 10 kilometers wide, this distance. It is just bounded by these five nodes of Chennai, Huzur, Koyamitru, Trichy, and Salem. So, what we aim, we as a state government entity, which is implementing this corridor, we aim that we create a better interaction between all industry players, suppliers, demand creators, R&D facilities, testing facilities, so that there is a long-term synergy. And eventually, we develop this entire region to be a defense production powerhouse. Of course, it will have its spring, uh, it will have its side effects as well, wherein it could support commercial aspects as well. TITCO has been nominated as a nodal agency for implementation of the corridor. And hence, wherever this defense industrial corridor, TITCO comes into play. To give a structure of what, what TITCO is and what we do, we are part of the Tamil Nadu Department of Industries, Investment Promotion and Commerce. In our, many other states, it's called as Department of Industries. But here, we are just not looking at only the companies which are operational. We are looking at beyond industries. Investment, promotion, commerce, everything is looked after by this department. Under this department, there are various agencies. I've highlighted four of them. These are four independent companies. TITCO is what I represent, which is the strategy arm of the government of Tamil Nadu. We build, we build companies, we collaborate with various agencies, we invest in companies as well. Then SIPCOT, which stands for Small Industries Promotion Corporation of sorry, State Industries Promotion Corporation of Tamil Nadu is a land bank creation agency in the state. It creates industrial parks. It does whatever is needed for development of infrastructure. So this is incidentally the largest industrial land, land bank owner in the whole country. Then we have another company called as TIC, Tamil Nadu Industrial Investment Corporation, which is very, very interestingly, the oldest state government owned lending organization in the state. It was created in 1959, it's a brainwave of the first finance minister of this country, Mr. Shankar Chetty. So he was instrumental in creating this agency right in 1949 itself, which is primarily for term loans for MSME, startup funding and other stuff. Then we have a body called as Guidance Tamil Nadu, whose job is to facilitate companies to establish themselves. They provide policy support. They, have, they do whatever is necessary for uh, handholding the companies in the journey to set it up. So if you look at it, there are four companies which cover almost everything. One which lends money, one which provides the land, one which strategizes, one which collaborates, and one which facilitates. So these entire companies together are in a position to help industries to grow in the state, which includes drone companies as well. About the company which I represent, this is, was established in 1965 primarily to promote industrial infrastructure development through joint ventures. The key thing is joint ventures. We have created more than 120 companies till date uh, at a cost of about 630 crores to us. But the market capitalization is something like 60,000 crores. And our source of funds is dividends what we get from the joint ventures and the profits which we get from disinvestment. We do regularly disinvest. So some of the companies in which we have either held shares earlier or we hold right now are on the right side of the screen that this would be a list of something like who, what's, who's who of the country and cutting across various industries. Some of them, SPIC, which is a fertilizer giant, Titan Industries. Very interestingly, we are the single largest shareholder in Titan, Tata's being the number two, but the world knows it as Tata's Titan, not Titco's Titan. So that is the model which we operate. We don't run companies. We let our partners run the companies and we just sit back and relax. That's a simple thing. So if you look at it, we are into real estate. We are into egg products. We are into uh, uh, life sciences, IT parks, steel, everything. We were into aerospace and defense itself also in form of investment in l and shipyard. Now we don't hold it. So that means we have invested in almost every domain. And the latest investment of us which is yet to be announced in public is we are taking a pick up a small, very, very small share in Garuda Aerospace, which is one of the drone manufacturers. Okay. 
amongst the uh, sub various subsectors of aerospace and defense we have identified certain sectors which we feel depending on the industrial might of the state we should be able to help them out there are 10 such industries 10 such sectors and two of them are highlighted which is very very relevant to this current gathering one is unmanned aerial systems and the second one is sensors radars communication and electronics because an unmanned aerial system is just not a platform which flies it's a platform which carries a lot of payloads and there are a lot of sensors yeah. and communication that so that's the reason i have highlighted two of them so that we say that we these are, are yeah uh, so we can say that these are some of the key sectors in which this current audience would be interested in why tamil nadu that's a next question is why tamil nadu why not any other state yes every state in this country is important but tamil nadu has a unique advantage of having a proven industrial ecosystem some of the examples we are the largest exporter of electronics in the country and very recently chennai was rated as the second best in the world for electronics r and d and we are we trail only cio globally so imagine that's the stature which chennai has and last year we were we were the largest exporters of electronics from the country and the largest manufacturers electronics automotive we are the number one for general purpose and special purpose machine we are the number two for it its we are the largest for r and d number of r and d registered institution we are the largest so all these put together we can say that we have a proven industrial ecosystem which can contribute to the growth of the drone industry drones consist of nothing but aviation of a high quality electronics which need machinery there is software in that and considerable amount of research so what goes and put them all of them together you have a wonderful ecosystem to support the drones the policy level support is also there for the town from the government if you look at the tamil nadu industrial policy 2021 there are certain sectors let me not look at the left side of the part let me focus on the right side some industries have been categorized as focus sectors while some of them have been categorized as sunrise sectors focus sectors are the sectors in which we are strong as on date and sunrise sectors are the sectors which we have identified for our future and if you look at look at it the second one is the aerospace and defense so that shows the focus we are providing for the aerospace and defense sector as a sector which would shape the tomorrow for the state and we also come up with a dedicated tamil nadu aerospace and defense industrial policy in the year 2022 instantly we are the second state in the whole country to come up with the aerospace and defense industrial policy after karnataka and this policy lays of various things but amongst that i thought let me focus on the financial part for now in the subsequent slides i'll be talking about various things which are coming part of the policy but let me make things interesting by telling what are the financial help financial incentives which one would get by creating their uh, products in tamil nadu first thing is the state offers a choice based on the investment size which is made here there is a choice of either getting a fixed capital subsidy that means whatever is the capital which is invested some fixed percent of it would be paid back by the government so you put 100 rupees here based on the size of the investment it could be 100 it could be 100 crores based on the size based on the location we could pay you back about 5 to 12% of the total assets created to the to the company bank or we give you another option in case there could be some companies which are cap less capital intensive but turnover is high so if that's the case the companies could choose a 2% turnover subsidy on the annual turnover for a period of 5 years so this is an option which a company could decide for itself at the beginning of their investment uh, investment itself apart from that there is one special scheme wherein titco could invest in companies with a stake of less than 50% few would not take a majority stake that means the company would be run by the private partners we would not run it we don't want to be a majority stake only we want to be a partner but the condition is this company has to be in tamil nadu so there are other normal uh, incentives 
which are provided by many other states like land cost subsidy. Let me not uh, touch upon this. I would focus on certain things. Since we are talking about R&D as well, in case there is an IPR creation, whatever is the cost which is involved in creation of IPR, we are ready to bear 50% of it for IPR filing other things. In case a company is IDEX winner and the company is ready to, willing to put up its facility in Tamil Nadu, there would be a grant based on the letter of award given by IDEX. And we could also invest in the equity of IDEX winners without any technical evaluation. There would be only financial evaluation to determine what would be the valuation of the company. That's the only thing. In case a company is taking up make, make category of projects of Make in India, depending on Make 1, Make 2, Make 3, the prototype development cost, we can fund about 5 to 50%. Any aerospace and defense company would get a skill development subsidy for 10,000 rupees per person for one year for a max of 50 employees. Any interest, any loan availed from Tamil Nadu Industry and Investment Corporation, there will be a 5% interest subscription. If there is a quality or product certification requirement, we are willing to pay 50% of it. So amongst these, I will skip rest of it. And uh, and if there is a there is a single window uh, portal, which is a single window, which is a single window for obtaining all clearances for aerospace and defense. This is made up by fifty percent stamp duty concession. In case you buy land here, hundred percent of stamp duty is waived off. And in case if it's a private land in certain districts. There is a back-end subsidy as well of 100% stamp duty waiving off. So this is a sort of financial support which is offered by the state government. But this is financial. But I know that people here are more keen on technology. How do you support companies on technology aspect? Yes. Before that, let's look at we want to help the companies. So we want to create ease of doing business here. So as I said earlier, Guidance Tamil Nadu is a body which has been created for that. And the most important thing is of them all is the last line. There is an escalation matrix. In case within the government, you have applied for some clearances, it's not happening. There is an app called as BizBuddy. Through that, you can have an escalation matrix. And within 35 days, if something is not resolved, it could go right up to the chief minister of the state. Till date, I can proudly say that nothing has gone to the prime minister, to the chief minister. That means we have been very, very quick in addressing the requirement of industries. No issues have been as lasted more than 35 days. That's a key thing. Yeah. Now coming to the real technical stuff. How do we help the industry to do their work? Establishing is something. Funding is something. But on your day-to-day -day stuff, every industry would be doing designing, testing, manufacturing, prototyping, again, re-engineering, rework, a lot of things. And these involve a lot of technology, a lot of money. How do we as the state help you with this? So for this, we have created common infrastructure. We understand that any such work technology aspect or testing aspect involves a lot of money, a lot of effort which is there. So we want to take off this activity from you so that you can focus on the core business, core technology development. So we have come up with a surface coating facility specifically for aerospace and defense components, which includes drones, in collaboration with GTN Industries at Coimbatore. We are also establishing a common foundry. Let's say there is a drone manufacturer which needs to create which needs to create something casting or forging. So they could use this facility for creating their, their stuff, whatever is needed. We are also in the process of establishing a common engineering facility center at a cost of about 400 crores in partnership with Tata Technologies. So the unique thing about this is, this will have the tools for designing, this will have the tools for uh, manufacturing, the machines for manufacturing, tools for testing. But there is this is the entire factory which has no product of its own. So that means any person who has an idea can walk in, design, prototype, develop, manufacture, test, and release it to the market. Or someone says, I need seven machines for manufacturing particular item for creating this particular drone structure. I need a CNC machine, which I don't have. So I can walk in here, make this, make a payment and walk out. People don't need to invest in capital. We are put up this. 
Then metallic fab for metallic fabrication, we have put up in Trichy in collaboration with 82 industries there, specifically for the large metallic companies. Then we have put up along with the accelerator called as Forge, which is based out of Kaibatu, at three places, a facility called as FOB, which stands for uh, Force for Rapid Transformation. So these are incubation facilities, which has a lot of tools cutting across multiple sectors at Hozur, Chennai, and Coimbatore, where let's say one of you is doing some electronic research work. You need an oscilloscope. You need a spectrum analyzer. You need a network analyzer. You don't need to invest in that. It's going to cost you crores and that lead time is quite a bit. You can walk in there, use the equipment, pay for it, walk out with your required testing. Apart from that, we have created, we are in the process of creating few test centers. The first one will be most interesting for you is for UAV testing at a cost of about, the number is wrong, it's at a cost of about 45 crores, close to Chennai, in collaboration with 75% funding from MOD and jointly funded by TITCO and four more partners. So this is a section eight company. That means this is not going to be a profit-oriented venture. And amongst this 45 crores, about 33 crores is going to come from MOD. That means we need to only bother about getting back the money for running it. So this cost is going to be passed on to UAV manufacturers so that this could be their equipment could be tested there. But this is for structures. What about payloads? A drone could a drone which is used in warfare could have some electronic warfare suit could carry some cameras. So what about that? It could be having nothing if sensing email, sensing cameras. It could be anything. So if that's the case, for electronics part, we are coming up with some more uh, test centers which caters for electronic warfare and electro optics. These are going to come up at Sri Parmadu, which is about 30-40 km, kilometers west of Chennai as an integrated test facility. So this, this would ensure that once you make your drones, you can test the uh, structure, you can test your uh, telemetry, you can test your payload, you could test your propulsion systems. All these could be tested at a fraction of cost. Yes, the next question comes. These are inside the building testing. What about my flight testing? We have tied up with the Indian Air Force and Indian Air Force has been really gracious enough to extend the usage of their airfield at a place called as Cholavaram, close to Chennai and very close to these facilities <clears throat> where actual flight tests could be conducted. This is a 1.8 kilometer long runway. Even if a manufacturer has something like a hail category drone, it could be tested there. Then we are also coming up with another facility for EMI, EMC and communication, which is also going to be located along with this. This is an advanced stage of planning and all these test centers would be up and running say by the end of next year. This is max. So these are going to give you an end-to-end -end test facility for your products. Apart from that, we are also creating a mechanical and material test facility at Pichi. Again, with industry partnership funded by government of Tamil Nadu, government of India, where some sort of mechanical testing could be done. I have a slide later which, can, which will show you what are the test facilities, testing equipment which we are going to put up. Okay, we have talk, spoken about testing. We have spoken about manufacturing. But let's come to the beginning of the game. How do you design it? Drones are very complex system. I call drones as nothing but miniaturized aircraft. And miniature manufacturing of miniaturized aircraft, designing them is a hell of a lot of job. So how do you do that? And the tools which are used are predominantly, let's say you have to use tools to design, tools to validate the design, tool to test your, uh, simulate your functionalities. You, you need to have some digital twin so that you, you can do all your simulation validation on your digital twin. So we have put up three centers of excellence in partnership with Dassault System, Siemens and GE Aviation at a whooping cost of about more than 600 crores, completely funded, the e is owned by the state government, by TITCO. And these, the first two, would provide you all the necessary design tools, training at 
a fraction of a cost what will be involved in case you do it outside. You don't need to invest in this. You have the expertise which comes from the saw or Siemens or from these centers. So you could use it the way you want. So you can, you can use it for your design needs. You can use it for your validation, simulation, anything. You could use it even for your training needs. Your employee, you might have the tools, but if you need to train your resources, you could use this. And one more is DE Aviation, which is nothing but a center for development of additive manufacturing technologies. Not at prototype level, but actual usage, industrial purpose level. So this is focusing on developing of additive technologies and developing of IP, focusing on manufacture of aerospace components only. So this can be used for additive manufacturing of your components of drones so that you, it, since it's not going to be a mass manufacturer, manufacturer, this should ensure that your cost, your technical challenges are overcome. Your cost challenges are overcome. Apart from that, once you have these things, in case you want to manufacture, where do you put up your facility? We have thought of that as well. We are creating multiple aerospace and defense industrial parks across the state. Couple of them coming up in Coimbatore, one at Hosur, and the next one is Bold, Karani near Chennai. There is a specific park which is coming up for strategic, strategic electronics and drones. And I'm proud to say that probably this is the only park in the whole country which is dedicated for drones and strategic electronics. There are other things I will skip. Apart from that, there are multiple parks created by SIPCOT and Tamil Nadu Small Industries Development Corporation, which are across the state. So any one of you wanting to establish in the state can go anywhere. But I would suggest you come over to Karani for the simple reason that it has access to test sites. It has access to the social infrastructure of Chennai and whatever you dream of could be there. And let me make it make the story even more interesting. There is a river which flows right next to this park. So you have a river which is uninhabited to do all your testing, flight testing. And this river is predominantly in the green zone. So even if it falls, if your drone falls, nothing is going to happen. And the river is dry for most time of the year, barring the rainy season, which is starting now. Okay, let me give you a location where this is. If you look at the map of Chennai, this is the metropolitan, and this is exactly here, northwest of Chennai, just off the Chennai Calcutta Highway and well connected by local transport, the local bus service and the local train service is along the Calcutta corridor, Calcutta Highway. And this is close. If you could look at the map, the electronics cluster is in the west of the city, and that is where the integrated test facilities is coming up. So, what you see as a dotted line is the peripheral ring road, uh, which is under construction. So, from the testing site to the location of the park is something very close. And if I can point out where we are going to have the Air Force facility where you could do flight testing, if my uh, if my cousin is visible, it is right here. It's right here. The flying, the runway airstrip, unused, unused Air Force runway is here. So this, we hope, we really welcome the drone industries to come up and set up here so that you could really relish the facilities which are available. Okay, moving on to the next one. Yes, this I don't think I need to uh, for uh, I need to talk about this because people here are working in the drone industry. Since this drone industry is growing at a rapid pace across multiple sector, and we are in a region which has the highest market growth rate. And for defense procurement, the government has put drones, unmanned aerial vehicles in the category of positive indigenization risk. That means these drones for military application cannot be imported. That means they have to be manufactured in India. So this is the time where the market has opened up, the defense market particularly is opened up while the agriculture, e-commerce, everything is already there. But the defense market is reserved only for Indian manufacturers 
who could possibly tie up with foreign manufacturers. That doesn't matter. But it needs to be made here. So let me skip this because you know, you are from the drone industry. You know very well what is a growth trade. And if you look at the main thing, by 2025 or even 2022, government is going to be the largest segment where applications are going to be there. And within this, the military is going to be one of the large sectors which is reserved only for Indian industries. So coming to what we are putting up at the test center in a place called as Valla Madagal, the name may be pretty complex. So I think we can call it VV. VV is a better sounding name. It's very simple. So for the UAV test center, it's going to have a wind tunnel, a temperature chamber, then to test your combined atmospheric temperature and humidity chamber, anechoic chamber for testing your electronics, dust chamber, water chamber, and instead of the wind, chan, wind tunnel is going to have gust generators as well, rain simulators, environmental chamber, everything is going to be there. Then the electro optic, electro -optic uh, center for in case your payloads are going to be related to electro optics, wherein it's going to carry thermal imaging cameras, anything. You can see the list, night vision devices. All these could be tested here. Coming to the top right, EMIMC, it's going to be one of the largest facility having a 10 meter RF semi anechoic chamber. Even if your drone is going to be a large hail drone, this could be tested there with RF shielding room of up to 100 dB. We could conduct all sort of tests. In fact, your telemetry, everything could be tested. This is not just an EMIMC test center, but an EMIMC and communication test center. Then the EW test center would have spectrum analyzers, field ranges for radar, motion simulators, radar test, network analyzers, all these would be here. So that means these all four facilities, which are going to be located within a radius of less than one kilometer, is going to provide all your testing needs, the ones of statics, static testing. But the dynamic testing could be done here for the small ones. For the larger ones, one needs to go just about 30 kilometers to the facility, which is at Air Force Station, Sholavala. So I think these test facilities would ensure that you have the top of the shelf technology for needed for testing here. And you have, a, you don't need to go around to multiple places. Yeah, as on date, in case someone is for propellant, so propulsion system testing, you need to go to some other place. For the electronic payloads, you need to go to some other place. And each one of them being at a long distance at a high cost. You know, since it's highly funded by the government of India, government of Tamil Nadu, we expect that this would be done at a cost of less than 25% of the commercial cost. We hope that this would transform the industry by cutting cost. Yes, the most interesting slide of them all. Thanks a lot for your patience. And I'm willing to take up questions and I will try my best to answer them. And if case some of the questions, I don't have answers. I'm, I would be willing to answer them in a, with a delay. I would respond later. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much uh, for a very informative and very interesting presentation. I'm sure uh, uh, our, our, our uh, members who have logged into Fiki Byte platform where this this is being broadcasted, they would have uh, taken note of a lot of things and a lot of opportunities which exist there. So uh, while I request our members to post in their question on the on the chat box in the on the bike platform on the right hand side, there is a Q and A button. If you could press that and post your question, Gaurav can take those uh, question and um, share that. And meanwhile, I can see Mr. Krishnamurti is also uh, logged in. So, yeah. sir, in case you would like to make any comment or any observation before we take up any question. It's good that Mr. Krishnamurti jogged in and logged in. I think his commitment with the minister got over fast and he has come back. I'm thankful for that. And thanks a lot, sir. Yeah, yeah. Good evening, all. Uh, sorry, I could not make it up. I was... <laughs> I should submit. So, uh, yeah, good evening, all. Madhu must have covered all our initiatives. So we are interested in developing the ecosystem to support the self-reliance objective of the government of India. Be it industry park or be it the, uh, you know, supporting aids like, uh, you know, for to carry out research through center of excellences, 
or the all kind of testing facilities madhu must have elaborated be it electronic warfare or optics or exclusively for drone in association with the ministry of defense or other ministry like maybe uh, you know we are in the process of uh, you know setting up of all these facilities like emmc or of antenna all that facilities are required and uh, also any other uh, our policy is vibrant make projects uh, we have incorporated you know uh, in addition to that especially for drone this being the seminar of many for drone the actual testing we have taken up with the ministry of defense to give a permission to use the cholavaram aspect and uh, exclusive industry park and what not we have whatever the feed based on the feedback benchmark analysis we have carried out all the analysis and uh, look forward to you to utilize this facility uh, that's all i would like to state uh, any further specific uh, questions or interaction definitely yes we are open please thank you sir thank you so much uh, so uh... while i I'll, uh, i'll request my colleague gorav to take over for the questions just a thought which came to my mind i mean going forward uh, uh, we were just uh, thinking maybe we could uh, say uh, visit uh, the facility along with our members and have a look and uh, you know that will give much much more uh, better idea to our members and they would be ready to sort of uh, look at opportunities in a better way so if that is a possibility then we'll bother you and uh, we'll you know yes. seek your cooperation in that so, so, uh, you may book your tickets for uh, the next year <laughs> because lot of them are moving so i would say that if you come if your team comes over in the next year probably you could spend your pongal in tamil nadu and have a look at this as well okay sure sure we are there to host you Welcome, thank Ali. you so much thanks for the offer sir so now i request gorav to take over for the questions gorav over to you sir uh, thank you mr madhusudan a very good very interesting presentation lot of data and lot of in fact uh, very very you know just please to note that a lot of uh, initiatives have been taken there at titco and uh, uh, you know Uh, so so basically one question that this which i am uh, seeing here is that around uh, is around the component uh, you know ecosystem uh, because drone manufacturing is something related is heavily dependent on the component so are there any uh, sort of related component ecosystem already there or planning to be there if if, if any update on that uh, that would really be beneficial okay okay let me take this question uh, if you take a, if i and permitted to uh, rip apart a drone a drone basically consists of aero structure which is a then propulsion system then the telemetry and then the payload i would rip it apart into four pieces there could be many more components but let me at a very high level let me repeat only the four components the first thing is let me take the structures structures are either metallic tubular structures or composites so when taking this metallic this one for if you look at the general manufacturing capability of tamil nadu which one of the highest where it supports it has the largest capability capacity in the country for automotive and the automotive supplier ecosystem is willing to look at this as well if you look at the composites composites basically for drones there are carbon fiber reinforced carbon and there are quite a few players who have already in the process of establishing their facility in tamil nadu and to support that if you look at the composite uh, industry in tamil nadu thanks to the predominance of wind power automotive where lot of composites are used there is a wonderful ecosystem to support that and these industries are very much willing to get into the aerospace and defense components as well and i mentioned about the common engineering facility center which we are creating at kwaimatu there is going to be one separate your lab and unit there for aero grade composites which means that is going to support the drone industry as well. this is with, with regard to the uh, the structures the electronics again as i said tamil nadu has is the number one player in electronics but because of whatever be the cost of the competition from china and the policy uh, things which are existing 
So the industry here was not looking at competing with Chinese, but right now it's become, it's a reality and the industry is gearing up to that. So the ecosystem exists for the electronic manufacturer, but the electronics, the industry to move to the supplying the drone industry is something which we are trying to encourage the local players to get into that. In fact, if you look at it, there is one company here which goes by the name of uh, Zupa Geosystem, which instantly is Chennai based and the only company which manufactures autopilots for drones. So there are a variety of companies. If you look at propulsion, uh, propulsion, the propulsion system, again, there could be two of them, internal combustion or electric propulsion. Yes, electric propulsion, uh, propulsion systems have been predominantly coming in from China. But there are a few companies which have started manufacturing IC engines at Coimbatore, again in Tamil Nadu. I don't think there are any companies which are manufacturing electric propulsion systems in India as of now. I Correct me if I'm wrong. This is what I think. So, but we are trying to create this, when we say industrial, drone industry part, we are not looking at only the drone assembling people. We are not looking at only the integrators. We are looking at even the component manufacturers, propellers, in the propulsion system, everything can go there. So we are focusing at that as well. So Gaurav, I hope that I've touched upon most of your... Yeah. Uh, is there any... Is there... Uh, I think there is somebody saying something. Yeah. I think I think that is open. Okay. Uh, Microsoft. Uh. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so I think very well explained, uh, Madhusudanji. I think you know uh, on the on the component ecosystem side, yes, definitely the most of the part goes into the electronics, and the, if electronics is, ecosystem is there, that is really wonderful. And you just talked about the Zupa navigation is already there. Uh, so, so that is on the component side. Uh, second uh, question is on the manpower side. So, uh, in terms of manpower requirement, are there you know enough uh, you know people there you know skilled manpower is there? Very interesting question. I am very very happy to this. So this is something like a question paper which a question paper which has been leaked out to a student. <laughs> I am so happy. <laughs> I came prepared for this question. Thanks okay. a lot to the lady or gentleman whoever has posed this question. You may pass it on to them. Okay, okay. When it comes to manpower, let me, I have to focus on the educational prowess of Tamil Nadu. The recent NIR of rank, ranking, National Institutional, I'm not sure what it stands for, I forgot about it, NIR of ranking, the top 100 education institutions of India, 33 of them are in Tamil Nadu, up from the 31 of the last year. So 30, 30%, one third of the top institutions of the country are here. The maximum number of engineers in the country come from Tamil Nadu. Maximum number of polytechnics are in Tamil Nadu. Okay, this is numbers wise. Then if you look at the national uh, gross enrollment ratio, that means number of people going into higher education. The nation has set a target of 30% to be achieved by 2030. This is the national to goal. And we in Tamil Nadu are already at 52%. We have long, we have almost reached double that value. So that means 52% of the people here go for higher education. Then let me come to, this is at a very, very high level. Let me come to very, very specific ones. Aeros, aerospace engineers, the highest number of them come from Tamil Nadu. Highest number of Katya trained people in the country are from Chennai city. Okay. Specifically, the government has created a new framework here. There's a scheme called as non mudalvan non mudalvan scheme is a favorite scheme of the chief minister of the state. What it does is the industry's requirement of skilled manpower. The, there is always a gap between the academics and the industry requirement. This skill gap was always covered after people are placed in the industry. So last year, what this government did was that they approached the industry to ask what is that skill set which you need to be imparted to the students. So these skill sets were, were 
really obtain then a syllabi eva the courses were tailor made to have electives and these electives were embedded in the 6th 7th and 8th semester of engineering colleges and we are extended to polytechnics and arts and arts and science as well so what's happening is there is a one credit course of what the industry needs which is imparted by the industry which is designed by the industry imparted by private sector into the students who are in the final year so the people who come out are plug and playable if i may please pardon me for using this term they are just plug and play worthy resources just put them on the job low and presto you have people who are there and apart from that there is something called as a work lab cell which has been created in guidance tamil nadu the job of this cell is to interact with the industry to find out what is the human capital needs of industry what is the skill set which is needed quantity quality all put together and then get in touch with the government of tamil nadu mechanism to ensure that there is a perfect fit so by this i can ensure that there is already a wonderful quality of manpower transfer and quantity of manpower and this quality and quantity is going to get better thank you uh, once again a very elaborated uh, you know answer to as the... i said this was a question paper which was already leaked <laughs> correct 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 so th this was a pre planned game set kind of a it uh, was not a game uh, set but i expected this as an important question i uh, definitely definitely see because you know if you if you see all the you know necessary raw materials for any any industry to grow up like you know the component then the skilled manpower are the two very important thing and you have already elaborated about the about the connectivity and the reach part of it and the and the other facilitation which ditco is actually committing to the industry that is already there and and so and in fact the the other another question is around the same thing that how can one uh, you know uh, get into or to get get about all the information regarding all these or the, rather the details regarding all these uh, facil facilities which is uh, which which are available uh, you know at ditco uh, i mean is there any website or any any chatbot or any interactive portal or or something of that so although we are planning a full fledged delegation over there but 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 is there yeah. any any ready made uh, thing available yes we have a website in which all this information is put up in either titco.com tamil nadu industrial development dot uh, dot com or tn defense corridor dot in so these are the two sites tn defense corridor dot in so this is available in these websites apart from that uh, because lot of things are in the various stages of planning so this may not be because things are dynamic it's happening every day every week there is a change we are available any time of the day except the time when we are asleep so barring that we are contactable by phone our numbers and our mail ids are put up in the tamil nadu defense corridor website we are we are available and i can assure you that we would respond back within one work day or i would rather not go that much within one day we would respond back there are a lot of things for example the details of the test facility what are the technical equipment which are going to be there it's not put up in the public domain because it's under creation right now but whatever policies other stuff are there these are there but something which is under progress it's not been put up but we can and whatever i presented i will share it with you you can share it with it's a open uh, document you can share it with others but it's not an updated in the web page and i have to i admit that the web page is at least 15 days always behind schedule yep uh, uh, really useful information again uh, i i i must appreciate you know the the, the kind of uh, commitment and the energy with which you are you are you are committing all these things uh, and 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 really really hopeful that uh, you know a lot of progress will be there uh, very shortly uh in fact a, a question is coming from this mr amar dubey is asking that uh you, you know any state level pli scheme on top of what what center is 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 doing is there any any sort of scheme uh, in that connection i would have to request amber to come and come here to tamil nadu and help us curate a pli because coming a question coming from mr amber dubey on pli is something which no one other than him, other than him can would be able to answer so amber i think you are hearing 
please come over to Tamil Nadu, help us formulate a PLA scheme. We don't have as of now. Sure, sure, sure. We'll, 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 he must be listening and then we'll communicate back. <laughs> so, 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 so uh, I have done with my side of questions. These are the questions. And in, in case there are any further questions, which we'll receive through email or through call, I will sure. communicate back to you and will connect you in case of any, any such thing is required. Yeah. So any any sort of closing remark from your side for and uh, Sir Krishna Murthy sir is al already there. Uh, any any closing remark uh, if he would like to make. My one remark is the seeds of aviation of outside Europe and uh, Asia, uh, outside Europe and North America took place at Chennai. The first heavier than aircraft took off in 1910, just seven years after the Wright brothers took to the air at Chennai in a place called as Island Grounds, just about three kilometers away from where I'm sitting. So that was a flight, first flight outside Europe. And that's a play, this place has aviation in its in its air. So it would support the drones as well. So I would welcome people to come over here and just exploit this place. A wonderful, wonderful conclusion of, of the today's session. Uh, yes, yeah, sir, Krishnamurti, sir. Perhaps, yeah, yeah. Uh, since I come in between, I don't know what are the aspects covered by Madhu. So one aspect uh, is uh, from government of Tamil Nadu is the policy stability. Whichever government comes, the, whatever the commitment is there, that is ensured, number one. Number two, like uh, we work in tandem with our sister department. So, IT department, they have created one IT and hub. And uh, we are in discussion with them uh, to support the startup uh, by you know, providing a free space for the startup engagement. And uh, we also wanted the idea to extend a voucher program, uh, which can be redeemed against the usage in our center of excellence. Uh, like there are many uh, like such things are uh, under pipeline, we are in discussion. So only aspect I would like to conclude is we have uh, a sincere team committed to partner or support with you. And you are welcome. So that's my uh, remark. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Literally, sir, very promising uh, you know, statement in that uh, connection. And uh, we really look forward to be in touch with you, your office for more work, you know, closely work with your office. Uh, now, uh, before closing the session, I would like to, if Mr. Sumit Gupta have any closing comments, sir? Uh, no, no, nothing specific. I think there was a very, very interactive session and a uh, lot of information has been shared. I'll request Madhusudan ji to mail us uh, his PPT if we can, and we'll share with our members and particularly with those who, uh, who would have probably missed the session. Uh, so uh, that will help them uh, also. And um, as as mentioned, uh, soon we will, uh, with, uh, in consultation with you and uh, Krishna Murthy sir, we will plan a delegation and we'll come over there and we'll have a detailed uh, interaction there and um, facilitate industry in whatever best possible manner we can. Thank you so much, sir, once again for joining us and helping us out. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.